Welcome back. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about different kinds of hubs and switches. Both of these are physical devices that are used within a certain network. First, let's talk about what a hub is. So this physical device is the most basic central connecting device that connects all of the computers on your network. It basically enables computers on the network to communicate, right? Send data, transfer files, images, videos, and whatnot. So everything goes through this particular hub. So for instance, a host sends data to the hub. The hub sends the data, or also known as broadcasting, right? So it broadcasts data to all the devices connected to the hub. And whichever computer is the destination computer will accept that particular message. And the other computers will reject it. So the function of the hub basically is just to receive data and then broadcast to all of the nodes on the network. Now, the question comes in mind that, of course, if there's large pieces of data information being transferred through the hub, the network traffic is going to be on the high side. There are a couple of different types of hubs. One is the active hub. It uses the simple power supply, you plug it in, and it regenerates the data and strengthens the signal in case of disturbances. So that's called the active hub. So if you were to purchase a hub, for example, by far an active hub. There are passive hubs as well that do not generate the data and strengthens the signal in case of disturbances. And these are typically used for media devices, right? Then there are intelligent hubs, and they're sometimes called as smart hubs. And these devices basically function similar to an active hub, but they also include another function, which is a simple microprocessor chip and diagnostic capabilities that are useful in troubleshooting situations. So different scenarios call for implementing different types of hubs. So once we understand what a hub is, it simply broadcasts all the data that it receives to all the nodes on the network. Switch works the same way as a hub, but they can identify the intended recipient of the data. So once the message is received by the switch, it takes a look at, for example, the data, the MAC address, and then only routes or sends the data to that particular computer. Very, very efficient. And switches can send and receive data at the same time. So they are very, very fast but yet a little bit more expensive than the actual hubs. Once again, types of switches. There's a manageable switch and unmanageable switches. So manageable switch simply takes an IP address that can be assigned and various configurations can be made on that switch. So the switch will have its own interface, right? So user can log in and take a look at and configure those switches enter IP addresses, assign addresses based on your own network topology. So it has a console port as well. And unmanageable switches are simply just the opposite. That IP addresses cannot be assigned and there is no console port. However, they'll just simply transfer data from one node to the other intelligently. Here's a couple of scenarios visually so you can see. On the left side of the screen, we take a look at a hub scenario where within the same network, exactly identical networks, we implement a hub. So the packet of data from a particular server, for instance, is sent to all workstations connected to a hub. So the red lines means data transfer, right? So here, the hub is simply receiving information and then transmitting it forward. So just like acting as a post office. The right side of the screen, you'll notice the same scenario, but this time we've implemented a switch. So now the packet of data from the server is sent only to the destination workstation connected to the relevant port. So here, once the signal is sent from the server, it goes to the PC only that is being destined. So in this lesson, just wanted to highlight the important functions and differences between hub and switches. So based on your own requirements and network topology, 
your own conditions of your network objectives and so on you can either buy hub or buy switches or you can have a hybrid situation as well so i hope this helps let's move to the next lesson